there is something in you that you can handle somebody with a mind somebody with intelligence and somebody with a gift if you can't handle this go get you a blow up doll but if you need somebody who is a thinking breathing being who has an opinion on their own cause here's the news flash I was the bomb before I met you and I will be alright if you leave me cause I know who I am Second Timothy chapter three. And I want us to read together verses one through seven. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one through seven. Come on, let's read it together. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, having nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are Verse number seven, always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Isn't that powerful? Lord, that's heavy. I'm going to tell you how good that is. I'll never do that, but I think we ought to read that again. Come on, bring that beat back. Take me all the way back to verse number one, please. Come on, everybody. But mark this. There'll be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lover of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Stop right there. Look at the person beside and tell them, I can't do nothing with people like that. Come on, let's go to verse number six, y'all. Come on. They are the kind who worm their way into the homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's good preaching right by itself. You may be seated. <laughs> I want to uh, preach for a little while today using as a subject, the batteries in the remote don't work. The batteries in the remote don't work. Look at the person beside you, tell them stop shaking it. The batteries don't work. Almost every person in this place has purchased tickets to see the sci-fi ethnic thriller Black Panther. But back in 1896, Chadwick Boseman wasn't the name on the ticket. It was Dr. William Priest, who in London rented out the Toynbee Hall and sold tickets to demonstrate how it is that he was able to make a bell ring by pushing a button 
that wasn't connected to any wires. In 1898, Nikolai Tesla filed a patent named Method of an Apparatus for Controlling Mechanisms, where he radio controlled a boat during an electrical exhibition at Madison Square Garden. Spring forward to 1950. In 1950, when Zenith unveiled the first television remote control, called Lazy Bones. It came free with every person that bought a Lazy Boy chair so that you would not have to get out of the chair in order to turn the station, but that remote was connected by wires. In 1952, something uh, happened by which, here it is, that people were able to get a new remote called Blab Off, 1952. That remote called Blab Off only silenced your television when commercials came on. And then when the show came back on, the sound would resume as normal. In 1956, Robert Adler developed the very first wireless remote control branded by Zenith. It was called the Zenith Space Command Center. It was mechanical and used ultrasound to change the channel and adjust the volume. Accredited for the iPhone and for iTunes is Steve Wozniak of Apple, who in the early 80s launched a company called Q. It was in fact its intention to create a remote control that could operate multiple devices even if they don't have the same label. The advantage is that it could adopt to different signals and patterns and you were only left with one remote. In 1987, it didn't sell many units because it seemed too complex for the average mind to be able to program. And the company soon folded and Steve Wozniak went on to start Apple. Today, almost everyone owns a universal remote because we want to be able to control everything in the room. And the reason why subconsciously we desire it is because it seems to be that that's the only thing we have authority over. You can't control the weather. You can't control the traffic. Your kids are out of control. Your coworkers can't be managed. So when you get home, the very least that you want to be able to do is control what you see and what volume it's at. As a consequence, visitors to your home know better than to reach for your remote. That's why it's against, watch this, the cardinal rule to go into somebody's house and start flipping the channels. You have to first ask the perfunctory question, are y'all watching this? And even the people who are in the kitchen in the next room will say, yes, leave it right there because they still want to be able to operate some level of control in their own house, even if it's something they're not watching. The remote control for televisions and radios isn't the source of the real tension that comes in when you think you have the ability, the power, and the right to control other people. Just because I don't want to be controlled doesn't mean I'm out of control. And there are a lot of people who get frustrated with you because you will not dance to their rhythm. You will not jump over their hurdle. You will not agree with everything that they offer. And they think that you are out of control when the truth is I just have a mind of my own. An anonymous author once wrote, if you insist on controlling the lives of others, you will run out of time to live your own life. A control freak has absolutely no limitations. A control freak comes at any age, any ethnicity, any gender, any income, any education, and even any faith conviction. 
A controller is one of the most dangerous kinds of abusers because it's often veiled as being protective. It is often veiled as being affectionate or being concerned when it's really about being in control. You got to love me enough to let me live. Uh, the father of the prodigal son is not given enough credit uh, because when his son came and asked for his inheritance early, the father gave him the inheritance knew, knowing he didn't have the maturity to maintain it. But because I do refuse to micromanage somebody who does not have maturity and discipline, I'm going to let you go play yourself and then come back when you are ready to acknowledge that I was right from the beginning. And I came to talk to those of you who are trying to break free from somebody who is aiming to have control over your life. Some of you think that I am just talking about somebody who you sleep with. I'm talking about somebody that has your last name. I'm talking about somebody that works with you. I'm talking about people who are in spiritual authority. I'm talking about people who try to make you feel they are indebted to them. I'm talking to people who build up false obligations who keep trying to use control in order to make you fall in line but if in fact you have your remote control handy there are four channels I want to give to people who are trying to get control back over your life would you please write these four channels down four channels that you've got to tune into in order to get control back over your life the first channel that you've got to tune into would you write this down that channel channel is called rated G It's rated G watch this but it is not family friendly uh, and so when in fact you have somebody who is controlling and rated G they are not family friendly pastor what do you mean by that they want to isolate you from everybody who is outside of the intimacy circle of them so they have issue with you talking to friends to siblings they have a problem that you want to hang out with anybody that is other than them they don't understand why you want to spend time with cousins or you entertain people who they do not know. They intentionally want you to break off any source of support. They want you to completely rely on them and rely on them alone. It is their intention to make themselves your God. And so when it is that you worship anything outside of them, they have an attitude and call it being protective when it's really insecurity. The only insecure person I got room for is God God is so insecure that he said thou shall have no other gods before me that if you worship anything else I'm gonna have an attitude y'all gotta pause right here because all week long you've been giving everybody attention but God and God is sitting on the throne with his arms folded and his legs crawled and say when are you gonna thank me that in spite of the ice I didn't let you fall in spite of the cold weather I let heat in your house in spite of you not being a good manager of your funds I make sure your car wasn't repossessed and your house wasn't foreclosed but you come into my house and you will shout better for somebody else than you will for me the devil is a liar God said I am a jealous God my grandmother put it this way can nobody do me like Jesus can nobody do me like the Lord you got to turn off from rated G from people who want to isolate you from other people and want you to be their only friend. I don't mind us being best friends. I just don't want to be your only friend. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Can I give it to you again? I want to be best friends, but I don't want to be your only friend. You got to go out and do something with somebody else because I can't breathe. Come here, Eric Gardner. Here is number two. Watch this. The second channel that you got to turn away from if you've been controlled is, watch this, not yet rated. Write that down, please. Not yet rated. You are dealing with a controlling person when they always have a critique and a criticism. 
you cannot give me hear this I want you to write this down in all caps you are not qualified to give me constructive criticism if you never built nothing y'all ain't saying nothing to me you are not qualified to inspect what I'm working on if you don't do construction all you do is demolition I'm trying to figure out how you love me but you always tear me down and tell me what's wrong with me and compare me to somebody else if they all of that go back to them and why are you with me in the first place and so they rationalize berating whether it's how you dress how you speak how you look how much you weigh how's your hair and they always constantly compare you to an ex or to an idol here it is so they take how watch this very seriously as if it is their job to keep you humble that is not your job that's God's job I can't hear nobody in here if I think I'm all of that it's your job to make me believe it I, I can't hear nobody in here because I got to fight everything else in the world when I get home you ought to be putting a cape on me and making me feel like I'm Wonder Woman or Superman because I got to deal with kryptonite haters all day long so when I get home when I open the door don't talk about what I didn't do but when I step through the door you ought to be screaming it's a bird it's a play here comes superman that's the kind of authority and affection you gotta have in your life first channel is rated g second channel is not yet rated <laughs> here's the third channel i want you to write this down and not yet rated let me go back to the second point if a film is not yet rated I want you to write this down if a film is not yet rated it does not qualify to be recognized an unrated film cannot win an award God, y'all just missed that. I said an unrated film cannot win an award because it cannot stand critique. So I don't want y'all to get me wrong. The person in whom you are in relationship with ought to be able to give you some insight, some instruction, and some help. But they ought to be doing it in such a way of love that you don't walk away feeling depleted and drained, but you feel encouraged. I can't hear nobody. Please don't always tell me what's wrong with me if you ain't gonna help me make it right God, I can't hear nobody you can't complain about my hair and you don't give me no money to get it done I, I, I need some real people right through here if you don't like how I dress the mall opened at 10 o'clock and the options are yours but please don't leave me in the condition I'm in <laughs> Let's have a throwback Sunday. Somebody say, preach black man. I'm doing the best I can. Let me give you the third one, please. The third one is rated R. Rated R. Watch this. Rated R. Write this down because controlling people have scenes of violence, whether it's veiled or open threats. So they will threaten you, watch this, or threaten to do harm. And here's the part, only five of y'all really going to jump up and shout about, and three of y'all almost going to be tempted to come give me a high five. So they are not threatening, watch this, to hit you. You got to be control. You got to be careful of controlling Jezebel spirits. So when it is that you get ready to cut them off, you need distance. It's unhealthy. It's toxic. Their threat is not to hit you. Their threat is they gonna harm themselves. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. If you leave me, I'ma die. I ain't gonna make it. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. I can't breathe. And you'll say, Oh, yeah. are you sure? I got a black dress. I've been waiting to wear. Are you sure you want to do that? I can't hear nobody because I'm not trying to be nobody's God. And if my life is getting better than yours, it ain't healthy. It's only for God that you say, for God I live and for God I die. 
then there's another kind of person who you got to be careful of watch this who don't threaten themselves only nine people now are really going to shout with me they threaten to withhold affection God help me in here so if you don't buy me this bag if you don't take me on this trip and they don't even understand that they are operating in uncompensated prostitution because they have made it an if then clause that in order for me to operate in my role and my responsibility you gotta buy me something the devil is a lie somebody lay hands on yourself and say I'm the gift hallelujah if in fact I wasn't the gift you would would have stuck with the last one but because you understand I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made pastor what makes me so great I was made just a little bit lower than the angels and just because I'm not perfect it don't mean I ain't qualified because with all of my brokenness three other people waiting to get me if you mess up because there's an assignment over my life fourth kind of controlling person I want you to have this please the fourth kind of controlling person what is the first one please come on what's the first one rated G not family friendly second one what are they please not yet rated number three what is that third one here's the fourth kind of controlling person in your life please write it down it's going to help you that person is rated X God help me what do you mean pastor they're rated X it's not what you think it is uh, the rated X controlling person makes you wonder why hallelujah why in the world did I lend myself to somebody this insecure this damaged and this broken I am drained trying to love you and I'm trying to figure out how I did not see the early warning signs that you are not equipped to handle a goddess I can't hear nobody in here there is something in you that you can't handle somebody with a mind somebody with intelligence and somebody with a gift if you can't handle this go get you a blow-up doll but if you need somebody who is a thinking breathing being who has an opinion on their own because here's the news flash I was the bomb before I met you and I will be all right if you leave me because I know know who I am and so they question everything they question why you need time alone they question why you going up to that church God I can't hear nobody they question why are you pursuing your dreams they question why are you reading all the time they question why you don't take things on face value they question why it is that you believe that you ought to be treated at the highest level of respect how about God told me to tell somebody in the room that you are not a game show host here it is that you are not playing 21 questions with folk that are insecure petty smart minded and jealous you don't need to stand outside the bathroom door if you need to go through my phone you haven't gone through me because you don't understand that I don't need to cheat or creep on a phone I pay for I can't hear nobody in here I'm too grown for high school games and I refuse to be questioned by somebody who brings my life no answers be seated please um be seated what's wrong with y'all in a letter to his mentee Paul wrote to Timothy a warning in 2 Timothy chapter 3 he said watch this these are the people watch this because you are anointed because there's a call on your life because you are gifted you can't hang out with everybody If you was regular, you could just jump on Match.com. I can't hear nobody. But because there's something peculiar about your life, you don't roll with everybody. Would you elbow your neighbor and say, he talking about me? Because I've had enough experience. Here it is with Jive Time Turkish. I'm tired of folk who are flossing but got no substance. They are dressed to the gods, but their children look like nine roads. A bad mile. I'm tired of folk acting spiritual but they really carnal I can't 
deal with just anybody. Say, so say, be careful. Those of you who are anointed, those of you who are gifted, those of you that have a call, be careful. It's a kind, a lot of wild people out here. That's what Paul said to Tim. He said there's people who are lovers of themselves. People who just love money. People who are pride, proudful. Who are abusive. Watch this. If they don't respect their parents, please know they won't respect you. God, I can't hear nobody. They're ungrateful. They act like everything is due to them. And they ought not make any sacrifices. They are unholy. They don't respect your God. They can get in your bed but can't get to your church they are treacherous they are conceited all they think about is themselves how they taking us in selfies and you sitting right there as if they by themselves God said be careful of folk like that be seated I gotta give you a shout real quick would you be seated please please be seated and Paul made a promise to Timothy that as your pastor, I'm making to you today. Watch what he said in verse number one, second Timothy chapter three. Look at what he says in verse number one. These are your last days dealing with losers like that. Y'all just miss your shout. Can I give it to you again? Your days of living like that are now behind you. You have outlived your worst experiences. You have outlived your past mistakes. Those days are behind you. No longer. Will you be involved with people who are just into themselves? Y'all really ain't gonna shout on this, huh? No longer you're gonna be involved or trapped up in snared with people who their whole life is just about money. God, y'all still ain't saying nothing to me. He said, no longer you're gonna find yourself involved with people, watch this, who claim to love you but don't know how to love. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. He said, no longer you gonna date anybody that got mama issues or daddy issues. Hallelujah. You ain't gonna be a mama replacement and you're not gonna be their therapist. You're gonna be able to be their partner. I can't hear nobody. Would you pull on your neighbor and say, that's what I've been waiting on God to do. Hallelujah. Do you know how frustrating it is to be gifted and alone? To be anointed and alone? To be special and alone? and people walk up on you talking to you as if they got a chance and in the back of your mind you thinking how did you think you could ever get somebody like me do I look that desperate that I will lower my standard down to somebody who don't even have a plan say so be careful be careful people who got a form of godliness but they have no power I got to get out of here I'm telling y'all something is getting ready to break in here he said be careful of people who got a form of godliness but they got no power here's what's getting ready to blow your mind maybe only my stewards and my preachers will help me right through here when Paul gives that list of people who are abusive disobedient ungrateful without love unforgiving hear this he was talking about people y'all ain't gonna believe it who go to church God, 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 I can't hear nobody. They got a form of godliness, but they got no real power. But God said, in this season of your life, I'm going to connect you to somebody that knows how to pray for you. Somebody that knows to hold you down. Somebody that knows how to cast out serpent. Would you shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, you just got connected to a saint that got power. Because the Bible said, if two or three are gathered together in my name, there! Hey. Huh. Hey, I got to get out of here. I 
need you to shake their neighbor's hand and tell them I got power. If I didn't have power, my ex would have drove me crazy. If I didn't have power, I'd be in bondage after the breaker. But you looking at a living, breathing testimony that greater is he that is in me than he does. Hallelujah. Be seated, church. We got to get out of here. The next service is coming. Would you be seated right where you are? Hallelujah. Look down your row and tell them I got power because I dated some lunatics. I dated some folk that were insecure, but I didn't let them break me. As a matter of fact, I feel better ever since I got out of it. I didn't understand it while I was in it. But I want to say thank you, Lord, that you didn't let me die married to somebody with no dream, with no vision, no ambition, and no call on their life. I said, grab that neighbor's hand. Come on, Sean, you awake? Pull on that neighbor and say, neighbor, you're looking at somebody that's got real power. I got so much power that I don't need another person to affect who I am but I found out last year that I'm anointed even when I'm by myself I got the gift of God even when nobody calls me there is a calling on my life I refuse to be depressed I refuse to be anxious I refuse to be lonely and so when the enemy sees me there are three people behind me the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost because greater is on the way. Y'all came to have church today. I came to tell the devil, y'all still ain't got your neighbor by the head. I said, take that neighbor by the head and say, neighbor, you only need one last shout. You only need one last scream. And you only need one last praise. Would you do me a favor? Would you scream one time? Would you yell one time? Would you praise him one last time? Pastor, why did you have me scream? Why did you have me yell? Why did you have me shout? He said, Jamal, when they scream, I didn't give him a car. When they scream, I didn't give him a house. When they scream, I didn't give him a million dollars. But I took the batteries out the remote control that anybody that thought they had control over your life the curse is broken is there anybody here that's gotta scream you ought to shout like the curse is broken give three people a high five tell them the remote doesn't work they can't control me they can't manipulate me they can't break my heart the remote Lift up that hand, please. Lift up that hand, please. God just took batteries out. Watch this. Of the remote of every person. Lift that hand. Who thought they could control you. God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. So the remote has authority over what you see. God help me. But not only does it have authority over what you see, it has authority over at what volume you hear it. God said over every lifted hand, I need you to brace yourself. Because anybody who's been trying to exact authority over your life just lost control. I can't believe y'all ain't saying nothing. Eh? They are not going to be able to dictate your happiness. They are not going to be able to upset your peace. God just took batteries out the remote control. 
I need that hand lifted. I'm going to pray for you, please. Because you have no idea who in this room. Y'all ain't going to believe it. You, you have no idea how many people in this room are being controlled by somebody they ain't even with. Oh God, I can't hear nobody. You. Lift that hand. I am. Every year I'm in any number of college campuses and um, I can't tell you how many kids come down to that altar after I speak. I went to a college, chose a major because that's what the parents chose. And it's not what they have a passion for. God, I can't hear nobody. You got no idea how many parents are still trying to run the lives of grown children. God, I can't hear nobody trying trying to pick out who they want for you. They ain't got to live with them. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. In, in control of friends who try to manipulate situations and circles and outings that uh, you got to sit with us if you're going to go. And if you're going to be my friend, they're trying to choose who else you can be friends with. But I want you to lift that hand. I want to pray for you, please. I am. I want to break every stronghold of control. Hallelujah. And sometimes the control is not in order to get you to do something. There are some people who hold the remote, remote control of your emotions. And it's only that person, only that person that brings cussing out of you. Oh God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. It's only that person that can make you go zero to a hundred real quick. Hallelujah. I mean, you got to take a deep breath before you even answer the phone because they still got control over your life. Hallelujah. You're so self-conscious about their opinion that now you dress with them in mind. Oh God, I can't hear nobody. They got so much control over you. Hallelujah. You scared to post because you don't know how they're going to react. What they're going to say. I want you to lift that hand as high as you can. I've been praying for you all week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel this glory right through here. Hallelujah. For some of y'all, this ain't even going to make sense. But for the 500 y'all I'm talking to, I need you to worship God. Why? Because God says starting the day, you getting control of your life back. God, I can't hear nobody in here. I said, open up your mouth. I'm getting control of my emotions, how I feel. I'm getting control of my thoughts back. I said today, for every lifted hand, you don't even realize what's happening in the spirit realm. Is I am getting control of your house back in order. Y'all really ain't going to shout. I said, I'm putting your child in the subjection and obedience to authority and discipline. God said, I'm putting it back under control. Your hands are lifted. Why? God said, for those of you whose hands are lifted, you don't even know I'm, I'm putting your health back under control. Somebody ought to be shouting right through there. Your blood pressure is about to normalize. Your, your cholesterol is going to be right on point. Your, your T cells are going to be at the appropriate levels. God said, I'm giving you control back. Because too much has been taking place. Lift that hand so I can pray for you. God, today for every lifted hand, I, I give you the remote control of our lives. God, this week I want you to help me see the picture you want me to see for my future. Not what other people think, not what other people believe. Watch this. Not even what I've convinced myself of. God, show me the picture of my destiny. God, this week, I hope 12 of y'all can't remain silent. This week, show me being happy. Show me being fulfilled. Show me walking in purpose. God, I need you this week to adjust the volume. Because I've had the picture, but the volume's been on you. I see it, but I ain't been hearing anything. 
And this week, this is for those of you who have a prayer life. God, I need you to speak to me. God, I can't. I need you to confirm what, what you've been showing me in dreams and in vision. God, say something to me. Should I stay or do I need to go? God, you got to talk and say it loud. So be undeniable that this is you talking in my life. And those of you, your faith is connected to mine. That February will not end without you getting control of your life back. If that's who you are, that's where you are. Would you give God your best shout of thanksgiving now? 